All right, so um, this is part two of the testing of in-ear monitors where I'm comparing uh, a wide range of low and high cost professional and lower line in-ears. Um, checking with pink noise, looking at the spectral response, looking at the transfer function, and then listening to music and actually playing them through these measurement mics so that we can listen to the differences between the ears. Um, this is a multi-part series and um, cool, cool. Let's get into it. All right, let's go to one of these. Oh, these are Audix. I don't know if these are out yet. Audix sent me the um, two TM2s to use for testing when I told them I was doing in-ear testing. Thank you, Audix. Now these are single 10 millimeter speakers. Um, I don't see a port in there, but um, I'm assuming there may be, there may not be. Um, I don't think they're out yet. Let's give them a check. All right, so there we have the Audix. Let's go ahead and look at the transfer function. And we'll grab the time here, find, insert. And this one is 0.17 millisecond. And its um, phase response is um, relatively flat and then it climbs up a bit. And it's a single driver, no crossover. And here's interesting, we're seeing the bass boost. And we're also, I can get rid of that. Um, seeing the low end boost and then it bellowing uh, smiley face down in the mid but we're not seeing a super sharp peak in the uh, upper frequencies here it's uh, it's softer and they're more merged and those two are 2.44 and 4.6 with another one down at 11.5 let's give them a listen okay ready and audit interesting um you know they're definitely very close closest we've seen yet and um they're not out yet but they're slated at 300 bucks um so you know it, it definitely falls into kind of a sonic line with the ue there they're vastly different yet they sound the most similar we've got a dynamic driver versus a uh, a multiple armature yet the sonic signatures are similar these are Stelsonics hybrids. Now this has both um, uh, armatures and dynamic driver, a dynamic driver in it, and it's a C9 hybrid. And um, I actually really like these. I use these a lot when I'm um, uh, running or bike riding, and we'll put that on there. Let's look at the transfer function. And we'll grab the time, probably pretty close right there. And look at that, again, a nice flat response. Now this one's very flat, but it's also multiple armatures and a dynamic driver, and they've maintained a very flat response, which is um, um, quite nice. And we're back to what we saw uh, with the UEs. Let's bring the UE pink up. And where we're seeing a flat response um, and some stuff going on in the high end, but not, um, let's pull the UE pinks up here. There we go. So 
uh, very similar response to the UEs. Um, sonic signature sim uh, smoother or similar. Let's give this a listen. Again, very similar. I think I'm hearing the Stell Sonics giving me a little bit of clearer sound in the mid range there, but or maybe it's a smile, maybe it's a little more smiley, but um, very close. Um, you can judge to see what you think. Oh, before we go, this one, this is interesting. This has got a real springy soft cable, um, and the uh, Ultimate Ears has a, a thinner cable, but again, very flexible. They're, they're again, and, and the way they're braided, I think this, they're really trying to minimize the cable noise. Uh, so far, I think all of these have had, oh, the Shure had a little um, coaxial round connector that pivoted, and so did the Audix. Um, the, uh, this one has a two pin connector like the UE. Um, some of them have two pins that are recessed into them to stop the pins breaking. Some of them have an encasement coming out. There's several different designs of that. Some of the cables are interchangeable. Some are not. Um, all right, let's get these. These are um, JH Audio Roxanne. And um, these we kind of get into a little bit beefier cable. This cable is... Um, actually eight wires breaking into two sets of four. So it's a lot more heavy duty. They put some more um, uh, metal running out and there's a, a low frequency boost or uh, adjustment uh, left and right in the uh, cable here that can allow you to tailor the sound a bit. Let's go ahead and call up the um, Roxanne Pink, which should be here. Um, great, we can recapture that. And um, yeah, it's it doesn't have the rise response um, of the UE. It holds together. Let's go ahead and look at that compared to the Stealth, which was a nice sounding unit um, here. And the Stealth, you can see it's got more of a bass rising response, but again, very flat. So this is not, uh, these are all these, um, with the exception of the Future Sonics, which these are all over, the Future Sonics, the Ultimate Ears, um, the Stealth Sonic, and the Roxanne, the JH Audio Roxanne are all, you know, between the thousand and two thousand dollar range. These ones, JH Audios are um, 1899 is the price on the site there. So these are not for the faint hearted. Let's go ahead and look at the transfer function and um, let's find that time. And there we go. Um, okay, look at the response is good. Now here's something interesting. Um, see how the green line is sitting at the extremes of this? That means that the um, in-ear is out of polarity. Um, it's the reverse polarity of everything else we've tested. 
Um, uh, whether that's a big deal or not uh, depends. You know, it, um, you're listening to ears. With you're listening to an iPod or any music, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. Um, but it's going to be the reverse polarity, you know, in reference to other things. Like the, if you're standing near a bass rig, uh, the sound coming out of the bass rig will hit your body in one polarity. It'll come into your ears in a polarity, and those polarities need to be matched whether or not um, it's in or out, you know, that's definitely something engineers should be paying attention to and um, knowing this, uh, but you should be able to do it acoustically. Stand from the bass rig, hit polarity on the ears on the output of the console um, or on the input, um, that input and um, set it for maximum summation. Okay, let's go to the spectrum. Look, good looking curve here and let's listen to it. All right, so bring up the music. Wait for the day that we will become until the time will chase the sun. Let me know when we will get there. My heart might tear apart. Feel so lucky when I'm with you. I felt. be really hard and I know it is actually uh, to get all that sound to be super accurate in this tiny little package and get that full response I mean it's a huge challenge um, also since in-ear transmitters don't transmit much above 15k and um, some of them they start rolling off lower than that um, professional in-ears don't really have a reason to reproduce frequencies above 12, 13K within any amount of significance um, because the current technology of transmitters just doesn't do it. Um, yeah, there may be other reasons, but that was quite nice. So let's go ahead and because of that, I'm gonna switch this over and put the Roxanne as our reference now because I like it. Um, and i um, pretty sure you could hear the difference there. I'll put these UVs over here. Um, next and last, well not necessarily last, but um, the last of the um, big ones here is uh, these are the L Acoustics Contour XO. Um, Oh, I didn't mention the connector. The connectors on these JH Audios actually have a little screw jack, a little uh, loosening thing you can unscrew. And when you unscrew it, there's four little pins. There's actually four pin connector and there's four wires going to it. So um, there's a lot more metal going to it, but they're really paying more attention to the cabling here. And, um, um, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, the the Future Sonics has a three wire cable that splits into two sets of two. So it's actually three to four. Uh, this is eight maintaining to eight going to four to four. So really uh, drastically different. On the other hand, you've got a much heavier cable here. And let's go ahead and hook up the L Acoustics. Now these are new and you know what's interesting is that these are actually made by JH Audio. So these are actually two different products manufactured by JH Audio. The difference is these are designed by L Acoustics and JH Audio is manufacturing. So they worked with JH and um, their tech staff and engineering staff to build it to L Acoustics specs. Um, so we maybe see some, uh, what we're seeing here, or what they got here is they've actually got a seven pin connector uh, and then they've got four wires going to it. So I don't really know what they've got going in in the wiring, 
But uh, it's kind of neat because it's got a round connector that kind of plugs in easier instead of unscrewing. It's a little easier to deal with. Um, but it doesn't rotate around like the Shure does. It's fixed in its angle. All right, let's um, take a look at the response of the contour. And also we'll look at um, these low frequency EQ, um, what they do that are in the, both the contour and the Roxanne cables. So let's start with um, calling up the contour. So I'll bring that up. And looks like we're nice and flat here. Let's go ahead and look at the transfer function. Um, and let's find the time. Insert that. And uh, phase response looks good. Um, so that's the L acoustics. And um, let's go ahead and save that. And I'll keep it right there. And then let's go ahead and look at the con, uh, con look at the um, Roxanne in comparison. Um, cool. The uh, oh, let's find the time on that. And there we go. So the Roxanne's in green. The L acoustics in brown. L Acoustics has got a very, very flat phase response. Um, oh, I put a polarity reverse on the Roxanne uh, sensor uh, microphone here so that we get it in polarity so we can compare the um, uh, phase traces, which, um, and which gives us a little more info here. And uh, we can see the response differential, the um, uh, contour in brown and Roxanne in green. Also, you can see the contour has got a little more output as well. Now that may is probably just due to the contours and eight ohm um, in here, and the Roxanne's twenty ohms. Let's take a look at what these low frequency responses do, and we can see that the low frequency boost starts around. Ooh, it starts way up here at about five point eight k, and it's giving us. Um, um, quite a bit, three, about nine dB a boost all the way down at 20, 20 hertz. Um, and so it's just picking the tail end of the response up. Let's do the same thing with the L acoustics. Put that up and L acoustics curve I saved a minute ago. So there it is. And Let's lock our time in, find, insert. All right, and um, now let's adjust the L acoustics low frequency EQ. All right, well that's interesting. It's different than, um, it's a much different impact. It actually is bringing up the low end, um, pivoting around 160 cycles and then bringing down the mid range at about 500 about 600 cycles so it's kind of smiley face curving it a little bit actually making it a little more like the um, ears that have those peak responses um, and and it doesn't have as much but it is there's a three now it looks like there's a 3k peak with a rising low end and a small peak at six and a small peak at 7.76 all right, so that wraps up part two. Um, I'm going to continue with part three and we'll test some more.